Archaeologists have reported various sources of evidence demonstrating the existence of scientific knowledge in ancient Africa. There were amazing scientific inventions in ancient Africa prior to the Egyptian civilization, ranging from mathematical sciences and astronomy to materials engineering and medicine. Unfortunately, the vast majority of discussions about the origins of science only include Greeks, Romans, and other whites. However, the majority of their discoveries occurred thousands of years after African development. While Egypt's remarkable black civilization is still captivating, there were sophistication and impressive inventions throughout ancient sub-Saharan Africa as well. Although only a few are aware of these achievements because Africa's history, beyond ancient Egypt, is rarely publicized. Our video today looks to illuminate some of the great achievements in science and technology in ancient Africa. Be sure to give our video a like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Great minds often indulge in the challenging rudiments of this area of knowledge, which has been immense in global growth and everyday life. It encourages logical reasoning, critical thinking, creative thinking, abstract or spatial thinking, problem-solving ability, and even effective communication skills. Hence, it is interesting to discover that many modern high school-level mathematics concepts originated in Africa, as did the first method of counting. According to Paul Jurds, a scientist and professor of mathematics, geometrical thinking began early in African history, when early humans learned to geometricize in the context of their labor activities. For example, hunter-gatherers in southern Africa's Kalahari Desert learned to track animals and recognize and interpret spores. They discovered that the shape of the spore revealed information about the animal that passed by, how long ago it passed by, and whether it was hungry or not. Over 35,000 years ago, Egyptians wrote math study material that included fraction division and multiplication, as well as geometric formulas for calculating the area and volume of shapes. Distances and angles were calculated, algebraic equations were solved, and mathematical predictions of the size of Nile floods were made. The ancient Egyptians assumed a circle had 360 degrees and estimated pi to be 3.16. The Ashango bone is a bone tool from the Democratic Republic of Congo that dates from 18,000 to 20,000 BCE. It's also a baboon's fibula with a sharp piece of quartz attached to one end, possibly for engraving or writing. It was initially thought to be a tally stick because of the series of tally marks carved in three columns running the length of the tool, but some scientists believe the groupings of notches indicate a mathematical understanding that goes beyond counting. Various functions for the bone have been proposed. It could have been a tool for multiplication, division, and simple mathematical calculation, a six-month lunar calendar, or it could have been made by a woman keeping track of her menstrual cycle. People in modern-day Sire developed their own numeration system 8,000 years ago, as did Yoruba people in what is now Nigeria. The Yoruba system used units of 20 rather than 10 and required a significant amount of subtraction to identify different numbers. Scholars praised this system because it required a great deal of abstract reasoning. Several ancient African cultures gave birth to astronomical discoveries, many of which have become foundations on which we rely, although there were some that were so advanced that their mode of discovery is still unknown. The Egyptians charted the movement of the sun, constellations, and lunar cycles, divided the year into 12 parts and devised a calendar system with 365 and quarter days. Meanwhile, moving water clocks and sundial-style clocks were used. The African Stonehenge, which was built around 300 BC in present-day Kenya, was a remarkably accurate calendar. Mali's Dogon people also amassed a wealth of detailed astronomical observations. Many of their discoveries were so advanced that some modern scholars attribute them to space aliens or unknown European travelers. Despite the fact that the Dogon culture is steeped in ceremonial tradition centered on a number of space events. The Dogon were familiar with Saturn's rings, Jupiter's moon, the Milky Way's spiral structure, and the orbit of the Sirius star system. While Sirius it is visible to the naked eye, 
Its companion white dwarf, Sirius B, was not discovered until the 1950s with an advanced telescope. The Dogon, however, were well aware of its presence, as well as its orbital period, describing its existence before it was confirmed years later. Many Africanists believe that the use of iron could have developed independently south of the Sahara and remains a contentious topic among archaeologists. Outside of North Africa, the earliest dating of iron is 2500 BCE at Aguero, west of Turman, making it contemporaneous with iron smelting in the Middle East. Archaeologists disagree with the Aguero date because of the method used to obtain it, although the 1500 BCE Turman date is widely accepted. The iron at the ledges site in Nigeria has been radiocarbon dated to around 2000 BC. Meanwhile, many believe that by 1200 BCE, iron was being used in smelting and forging tools in West Africa, making it one of the first places where the Iron Age began. African methods of extracting iron were used in Brazil prior to the 19th century until more advanced European methods were implemented. According to John K. Thornton, African metalworkers produced goods at the same or higher productivity levels as their European counterparts. Throughout ancient Africa, many advances in metallurgy and toolmaking were made. Steam engines, metal chisels and saws, copper and iron tools and weapons, nails, glue, carbon steel and bronze weapons in art are just a few examples. The architecture of Africa, like other aspects of African culture, is extremely diverse. Africans have developed their own local architectural traditions throughout the continent's history. In some cases, such as West Africa's sudano sahelian architecture, broader regional styles can be identified. The use of fractal scaling is a common theme in traditional African architecture. Small parts of the structure tend to look similar to larger parts, such as a circular village made up of circular houses. And then, there are the complex built environments created by various African societies in the past. Of course, there are the Egyptian engineering marbles, such as the perplexingly raised obelisks, as well as over 80 pyramids. The largest of the pyramids is 13 acres in size and is made up of 2.25 million stone blocks. Later in the 12th century and much further south, Zimbabwe and Mozambique had hundreds of great cities. Massive stone complexes served as the city's nerve centers. A 250-meter-long, 15,000-ton curved granite wall was one of them. Massive castle-like compounds with numerous rooms for specific tasks, such as iron smiting, could be found in the cities. Mala's empire boasted impressive cities, including Timbuktu, with grand palaces, mosques, and universities in the 13th century. The walls of Benin City, for example, are also worth mentioning because they are the world's largest man-made structure and were partially destroyed by the British in 1897. Many treatments we use today were employed by several ancient peoples throughout Africa. Before the European invasion of Africa, medicine in what is now Egypt, Nigeria, and South Africa, to name just a few places, was more advanced than medicine in Europe. Some of these practices were the use of plants with salicylic acid for pain, as in aspirin, kaolin for diarrhea, as in caepectate, and extracts that were confirmed in the 20th century to kill gram-positive bacteria. West Africans, specifically the Akan, appear to have known how to immunize themselves against smallpox. During the 18th century, a slave named Onesimus explained the inoculation procedure to Cotton Mather, New England Puritan clergyman and prolific writer. He claimed to have learned the procedure in Africa. Many West African groups practice bonesitting. It is a form of joint manipulation. Bonesitters were the primary providers of this type of treatment prior to the arrival of chiropractors, osteopaths, and physical therapists. They have traditionally practiced without formal training in accepted medical procedures. Bonesitters would also help to prevent joint dislocations and reset bone fractures. Also, the mosquito was identified as the cause of malaria in Jenny, a town and an urban commune in central Malas, inland Niger Delta region, and cataract removal was a common surgical procedure. 
as in many other parts of Africa. Based on Timbuktu manuscripts, African Muslim scholars were aware of the dangers of tobacco smoking. Other plants used had anti-cancer properties, caused abortion, and treated malaria, all of which were shown to be as effective as many modern-day Western treatments. Africans also discovered wabane, capsicum, physostigmine, and reserpine. Vaccination, autopsy, limb traction and broken bone setting, bullet removal, brain surgery, skin grafting, filling of dental cavities, installation of false teeth, caesarean section, anesthesia, and tissue cauterization were all medical procedures performed in ancient Africa before they were performed in Europe. Furthermore, African cultures universally performed surgeries under antiseptic conditions at a time when this concept was only emerging in Europe. The majority of us are taught that Europeans were the first to sail to the Americas. Several lines of evidence, however, point to ancient Africans sailing to South America and Asia hundreds of years before Europeans. Thousands of miles of African waterways served as trade routes. Many ancient African societies constructed a wide range of boats, including small reed-based vessels, sailboats, and grander structures with multiple cabins and even cooking facilities. The Mali and Songhai built 100-foot-long, 13-foot-wide boats capable of carrying up to 80 tons. In the Atlantic Ocean, currents flow from West Africa to South America. Small numbers of West Africans sailed to the east coast of South America and stayed, according to genetic evidence from plants and descriptions, and art from societies living in South America at the time. Scientists have successfully completed the transatlantic voyage after reconstructing these ancient vessels and their fishing gear. These ancient peoples sailed to China and back around the same time they were sailing to South America in the 13th century, carrying elephants as cargo. People of African descent are descended from ancient, complex cultures that produced a wealth of technologies in a variety of fields. Hopefully, more research will be done in this area in the future, and more people will be aware of these remarkable achievements. That does it for our video today. Be sure to leave a comment to let us know what other impressive achievements from ancient Africa should be on the list. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen, which looks into scientists' shocking findings of the dark-skinned Africans with blue eyes. As always, give the video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.